Massachusetts, it's a great place to work. You can build a career here. Come here, we will build on your college experience, we will give you additional training and experience, you can grow in this company, and you can have a great lifetime career. And so they're known as really the best place to work. And so we see here a comprehensive strategy of attracting and retaining the skilled, motivated IT professionals that they need, who not only deliver today's services, but are developing new services for tomorrow which is being increasingly valued by great global companies around the world who choose Infosys to be their IT service provider. And the financial measures are how we keep score. It's working. Revenues are up and earnings are up. So very balanced, comprehensive, strategic performance. And here's a list of a diagram of companies around the world uh, that have implemented our approach we call this the Hall of Fame for the Balance Scorecard. Uh, in fact, next week I will be in Madrid. We have our European and Middle East Summit, and we will induct five new organizations uh, into the Hall of Fame. It's still a secret, so I can't share them with you. Uh, but there's one national government in the Middle East that will go in, uh, one very important city in Spain that will go in, as well as an NGO from Finland uh, and a couple of private sector companies. Uh, so again, very diverse industries and sectors of, of, uh, using this. I should mention, how do you get into the Hall of Fame? It's actually not that difficult. There's only two criteria. One is, you should be using the balance scorecard about the way that I will be explaining to you and Dave Norton and I have been introducing. And second, it had to be working for you. It had to be helping these companies or nonprofits or public sector organizations drive breakthrough performance. And so Dave Norton and I you know, review these applications to see if the organizations have implemented it faithfully uh, following you know, our general approach, it doesn't have to be exact, uh, but general principles, and we look at the results. Not just financial results, it has to be customer results, and process, and people. We want to see that balanced performance. Uh, so the private sector companies are on the top. Uh, there are a couple actually here coming out of uh, uh, southeastern uh, Europe. Uh, Cleaver is a pharmaceutical company. I don't know if I have a Oh, here's my laser pointer. Uh, so Plever is a pharmaceutical company based in Croatia. Uh, There's a very interesting company I got to know 10 years ago out of Slovenia, which is a financial services company, uh, Aptiva. And let's see where my financial services are. This is Aptiva here. Uh, so, and I was recently, uh, last week, uh, maybe 18 months ago, in uh, Belgrade. Uh, so there's some Serbian companies I know are uh, starting to use this as well. But the companies are in China, they're in Japan, uh, they're in Indonesia, uh, throughout South America, and the Middle East. So it's, uh, it transcends regions and cultures. And there are many different kinds of industries. In addition to the private sector, many government organizations uh, including defense-oriented organizations. I'll be in Madrid. One of the organizations that went in is this one, Metro de Madrid, which is the third, fourth, and maybe now third largest urban transport system in the world. They use the scorecard. They stress cleanliness, safety, on-time performance, friendly employees. Uh, and you can go on that. I, whenever I go to Madrid, I use public transit to check it out. And uh, generally, Good experience. Uh, we're happy to have that there. Many healthcare organizations are using it, uh, nonprofits, including universities, uh, and service deliveries. So it's, it, this is a tool that does work. It doesn't work all the time, uh, for reasons I'll explain. Uh, but we do know it can work, and this is the data that we see to do that. Now, as I said, if we were to survey organizations, Generally, about two-thirds of organizations, if I, on a show of hands or on various uh, written surveys, will shed, say they're using some form of this approach, the balanced scorecard. Obviously, 
not all of those have made it into the Hall of Fame. And so people say, what goes wrong? Why, where does it not work? And I would say the number one reason where this system has not delivered results has less to do with the system and more to do with the leadership of the organization. Uh, where it has failed typically is because the approach has been brought in by a staff group or a middle management group. And it's good. It's a better measurement system, and so they end up with more measures than they had before, but it doesn't drive breakthroughs in performance. It doesn't help them really execute their strategies. It helps them do their operations better, but it doesn't help them implement their strategies, which is the number one and the number two priority for the senior executives. And so the, the most critical ingredient, actually, that I look for for success is the nature of the leader. Uh, is this leader really interested in driving improvement uh, and creating success and accomplishment? So we spend a lot of time, and I'll talk quickly about leadership, but sometimes we get too infatuated with just leadership, and we forget about you know, management. Uh, so leadership is about inspiration and new directions and challenges, as we'll see. But we have lots of visionary leaders that can't get the job done. So the real power is to combine the rigor and the discipline of management to help deliver the vision and the inspiration that the leaders provide. And so this is the symbol, of, I mean, it's the Chinese symbol of harmony, of yin and yang. And what we want to achieve, actually, is not one or the other. We actually need uh, great leadership, but we also have to complement that leadership with management approaches and tools that can deliver on this. Uh, there was a bank in Brazil that, at the beginning of its balanced scorecard project, gave out a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, to all the employees, 20,000 employees. The employees said, why are the executives giving us this little puzzle? Well, when they put the puzzle together, they got this picture. And this is a picture of actually a very famous uh, family in Brazil that races sailboats and sails around the world. What is this jigsaw puzzle communicated to the 20,000 employees of this bank? It says to be successful, on this sailing expedition, this great journey that we're about to go on. We certainly need an outstanding helmsman, the skipper who's setting the direction and the course and steer, helping us to steer. But he can't do it alone. He needs the crew. And he needs the crew on board working in harmony with each other and also working to deliver on the vision and the direction that is set by the leader.